string representations of objects are important because they let us see what the objects are. So an object value should behave like the kind of data it is meant to represent. That's the whole idea of having an object system. For instance, an object should be able to produce a string representation of itself so that we know how to print it out. Because strings are important. They represent language, the kinds of things that humans can read, and they represent programs. And in Python, string representations are meant to do both. So in Python, all objects produce two string representations. The str string is meant to be legible to humans. The repr string, for representation, is meant to be legible for the Python interpreter, which takes in programs that are just strings. The str and repr strings are often the same, but not always. So when they're the same, that means humans and Python are in... So when they're the same, that means that the humans and the Python interpreter are consuming the same data, the same strings, which is not so crazy. You want all of your programs to be human interpretable as well. But there are good reasons why they differ. Let's first talk about repr strings. There's a built-in function called repr, which returns a Python expression as a string that evaluates to an equal object to the argument that was passed in. If I call help on repr, I see the following information. So this is part of the built-in Python documentation of the language. It says that repr returns a string, which is the canonical string representation of the object. For most object types, evaluating the repr of an object gives you an equal object. And we can see here that it must be a Python expression that's returned because that's exactly what eval takes in. It takes in a Python expression and returns its value after evaluating it. The result of calling repr on a value is what Python prints in an interactive session. So if you're ever in an interactive session and you see that you s the value of some expression that you've typed in is slightly different than what you typed, that's because there's a lot going on when we get from here to here. So we type in a Python expression, it gets evaluated to some object, in this case a float object, and then that float object gets printed out using the repr of the value, which is the canonical string representation. So 12e12 is not the canonical way to write this, but 1, 2, and then a bunch of zeros after it is. We'll see the same result if we print out the repr string of 12e12. Some objects do not have Python readable strings as their repr string because it's hard to generate such an expression. So for instance, the built-in min function, you can't just write it out in one line. So instead, you see some proxy. When you call repr on it, you see angled brackets, and it tells you it's the built-in function min. And you should have seen something like this in your interactive sessions before. OK, now onto the stir string. Human interpretable strings are useful as well, because humans interact with programs. So let's say I import the date time module and set today to be equal to a date in 2014, October 13th. The repr string for today needs to be a Python expression. And so we see date time dot date and then the three arguments that we pass in. But of course, it's not the case that humans write dates in this way. Humans write dates like that. Actually, there's lots of different ways that people write dates, but this is a common one. So what we see here is a difference between how a date is expressed in Python and how a date is expressed among humans. So the result of calling str on the value of an expression is what Python prints using the print function. So if I print out today, I'll see 2014-10-13. Let's check this out for ourselves. So first I'm going to import this date class, which is built in and allows me to create dates. 
such as today. Now if I look at today, I see the repr string, which is exactly what I see if I ask for the repr string of today, except for this one has quotes around it because this is a string. So if I want to exactly replicate what happens when I type today, I would have to print out the repr string for today. Now I get a different result if I just print today, which is the same thing if I print, print the stir of today. And this is what you get when you call the stir function on today. Well, then you ask today, what's your normal human readable string representation? And then we print it out. Because stir today returns a string. OK, let's do another demo. Here is a string. What's the stir of a string? Well, a string is already a string, so it's the same as it was before. But the wrapper of a string is different. See how I've added more quotes around it. And that's because I want it to be the case that when I evaluate the wrapper of a string, I get back the original string. Whereas if I just evaluated the string, I would have a problem, because hello world is not a valid expression in Python. So the wrapper of s tells me that I have a string which contains, quote, hello world, end quote. And the wrapper of the wrapper of s contains quotes within quotes within quotes. And the more times I call wrapper, the more times I need to quote the inside. And all of these backslashes are telling me that uh, I don't want to actually end the string that I've started, but instead I just want to quote it. OK, so this got very complicated. The details aren't too important. But what is important is the reason why we get to this complication here is that it should be the case that when I evaluate this many times, I get back the original string. 